through all the lies with the truth. Hear the sound of the wind. Let the roar of heaven begin. Come on. Oh, I can't stay silent. Can't stay still when you show up in power. Glory revealed. Oh, I can't stay silent. Can't stay still when Jesus, 
God, we love you. God, we thank you that you're here in this room. I thank you that you're in every room. Anybody who's watching right now and today, God, I just pray that you give us exactly what we need. God, here as in heaven, I pray that it is here on earth today. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise in advance for what you're set to do. I pray that somebody's life is changed in Jesus' name. And everybody in this room, in that room right there where you're at, said amen. Come on, give God one more shout of praise today. Come on, man. <laughs> As we get ready to jump in, our team is gonna transition. Listen, we're gonna have church today. It's gonna be like we're just gathering around in the living room, man. So y'all just find a place. Our team's gonna grab a chair. We're just gonna hang out. We got a little bit of a smaller team in the room today uh, because we're operating based off all the guidelines given for COVID. Y'all, this world is crazy right now. But I still believe that you can have church and you can still meet the presence of God. You just, we're gonna work with it. We're gonna work with what we got. And the enemy is not gonna stop what God's trying to do in this earth. I'm telling y'all, it ain't gonna happen. And so we got a team of us in the room who believe the same thing, man. We're gonna dive into what God wants to talk to us about today. And if you have a Bible, you can go ahead and grab that. Look with me to Joshua chapter six. All of us here in this room are gonna get ready to dive into the word. Anybody excited about the word of God? Come on, man. Excited about the word of God. It's cool because normally we have like a bunch of the team behind us, but y'all, I'm so excited. We have a full Trove Heights worship team. We got a full band up in here. (laughs) <laughs> it's amazing. And so any of you guys who have been riding with us for any amount of time, y'all have watched it all from, I make this joke every time, but it is how it started right there in my parents' study in Houston, Texas. My mom was in a picture on the wall behind me just smiling at us. <laughs> and then Jacob jumped in and we were just doing that thing and now here we are. And so if you've been giving towards Trove Heights, you've been sowing into what we're doing here, you've been riding with us, man, thank you. You're watching the whole thing literally come to life uh, by a bunch of people who just have one common goal. We believe that God wants to change lives, not only here in Nashville, but all over the place. And so before we jump in, go ahead right now, right there, wherever you're at, hit share, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching from, hit share, put it, tag us, do whatever you wanna do, but get this in front of somebody because now more than ever, people need hope. People need Jesus. I need hope more than ever, so I know the rest of us do. We all need Jesus. And so today I believe that I have something that I think is gonna help you with where we're all headed Uh, by just keeping our focus. And so today, we're gonna look at Joshua chapter six, and the title of my message is this, Look Sharp Now. Look Sharp Now. I don't, my granddad used to say that when I was a kid, I didn't really know what that meant. (laughs) But I get it now, it's in God's word. So maybe maybe I'm gonna start saying that, I'm like, you better look sharp now. I don't even know what that means. (laughs) But today we're gonna find out a little bit. Let's look at verse two, Joshua six, two. I'm reading out of the message version here today. And it says, God spoke to Joshua. He said, look sharp now. I've already given Jericho to you along with its king and its crack troops. Here's what you are to do. March around the city, all your soldiers circle the city once and then repeat this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns trumpets in front of the chest. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times, the priests blowing away on the trumpets. And then a long blast on the ram's horn. When you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once. All the people are to enter, every man straight on in. Now fast forward to verse 20, and it says, the priests blew the trumpets. When the people heard the blast of the trumpets, they gave a thunderclap shout. The wall fell at once. The people rushed straight into the city, and they took it. Man, that story, that's a good story. That story makes you feel good. If you grew up in church, you've been in church any amount of time, you've heard about Joshua and the battle of Jericho. Like, we grew up in Sunday school and we had these green like felt boards and you would stick stick figures up there and they were like, that's what we did. Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, this is one of the main stories in the Bible. If you've never heard the story, I'm gonna set it up for you today. If you go to Joshua chapter one, now you can go to the beginning of your Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and you can find all the way, Joshua's one of the first few books of the Bible right there. Joshua became Israel's leader after Moses, their fearless leader, died. So this has been speaking to me from the season we're in. Y'all know when COVID started in you know, March, April, we had no idea what we were doing. We've never faced anything like this in our lives. And then right about summertime, how many of y'all were like, I don't even need a mask, it's going away. It's all stopping. Everything's changing and shifting. Well, now over the last two weeks, man, does it not seem like it's more rampant than it was before? It's, it's crazy. We thought we were past this. We were behind it. Well, this is kind of how this story sets up. Joshua chapter one, we see Moses is dead. Now, Moses was the leader. Watch the Prince of Egypt. I make a joke about that every time. But seriously, watch the movie. You'll know what I'm talking about. Moses, their fearless leader, has died. He carried him out of 400 years of slavery, and their fearless leader is dead. What in the world are we gonna do? This is something we've never dealt with before. We've never faced this. 
and then enters Joshua. And God has to tell him, you look at verse one, he tells him many times, many times, be strong and courageous, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Like we needed that kind of word this year, if ever, because we've never faced this before. So then he, he, he says, all right, I got this. So he goes on the journey. Then they come up to the Jordan River. Uh, adversity just gets more and more and more. And he said, God, what are we gonna do? And he tells them to walk in. The, and they cross the Jordan River and they're on their way to the promised land. Now, how many of y'all remember at the beginning of 2020, we were going to the promised land, weren't we? 2020 vision for 2020. This is gonna be my best year yet. Like we all thought that, right? 2020, what a cool year. Oh, this has been anything but a cool year. This has been crazy. And so we find ourselves, Moses is dead. What are we supposed to do about this? And just when we thought we were getting behind, all this behind us, we find ourselves in Joshua 6. And we, we, we got past it. It's going away. We're on the way to the promised land. 2020 is actually gonna end up the way that we may have thought. And nope, now you got a Jericho in front of you. And that's where we pick up in this story today. Uh, it says that, they were, they were rolling up and they had to see something. They had to see something. And so I wanna throw this to you. The, the look sharp actually means this, to act quickly, to hurry. So I think it's interesting that he used this language because they're rolling up into the promised land and they're looking at something they've never dealt with before. We have no idea. We don't know. We don't have a plan. We don't know how we're gonna make it. How are we gonna do this? And God says, look sharp now. So he says, I need you to act quickly. I need you to hurry. It's time to go. It's time to go. Now in the middle of COVID, this word is speaking to me directly because as a church planner, <laughs> this looks nothing like we thought it was gonna look. And maybe you're like, why in the world would you plant a church during COVID? I don't know, you tell me. I have no idea what we're doing. Like God, did, God called us before all this happened and we stepped out and here we are. What are we gonna do about it? Look sharp now. Look sharp now, we got, a, we got a room full of people in here that are playing instruments and they're singing and they're loading in and we're just doing this thing and I'm standing on the carpet in the middle of a warehouse looking at you on the camp. Like we're, there's a ladder back there, you can't even see it. Like we're just trying to do some stuff to move in a hurry. There's, we, the world has given us plenty of reason to stop and wait. But I wanna tell you today that eternity is in the balance. It weighs in the balance. People are gonna die and go to heaven or hell if it's not for us. So we are a room full of people that we're like, okay, look sharp now. All right, I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna act quickly. We're gonna act in a, hur in a hurry. And in order to do this, we need to do three things today. Very simple. I encourage you to take notes, write this down. Number one is you gotta remember your who. You gotta remember your who. This is all about your source today. Now, in this season, I have questioned my source many times. And I would venture to say you've done the same thing. We roll into facing something that we've never dealt with and it was supposed to be the greatest years of our lives. And we start questioning, how do we do this? What do we do about this? How do we figure it out? Do I need a mathematical problem to solve? Do I, do I need to figure out a formula? What should I, no, I, I, we gotta remember our who. Remember the source. In Joshua 6.2, he tells Joshua, I've already given Jericho to you. God has already given you what you need, okay? God is your source. You, I did not get here on my own. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I did not get here on my own. God has brought me every step of the way. He's been beyond faithful and his love never fails. His mercy is new every single day and it's never gonna stop. God is the one that got me here. God is my who. But I find myself in many times and I'm, I'm overwhelmed with anxiety and worry and doubt and that comes from me forgetting who my who is. Today, I wanna just encourage you, remember your who. Stop right here, right now. Maybe you just, that's all you need today is you just need to remember God's got me. He's got the whole world. And it's, he's got you. He's got us. He is our who today. Now, if you rewind a little bit and you go back to Joshua chapter five, we can look at verse 13. And this kind of sets up where we are at this point. They're on the way to the promised land. They've gotten past Moses dying and the Jordan River. Okay, now we're moving. We're figuring this thing out. We got this COVID thing figured out. We got all the mass mandates. We're figuring it all out. And then boom, what's happening? And so this is where we pick up verse 13. It says, now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Now, first off, if, if I saw a man with a flaming sword in front of me, I ain't going up to him and asking him nothing. I'm out. That's weird all on its own. He walks up and he says, are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. We, listen, we have to take Jericho. God, how are you gonna help me do this? I don't care that you got a sword of fire. I got to figure out my own situation. We are all selfish by nature. We were born in a sinful, fallen world. We're sinful, fallen man. We're selfish. So we all the time get in this battle of, God, what are you going to do for me? 
God, what are you gonna do for me? And he says, oh, no, no, no. I'm not for you or for them. I am commander of the army of the Lord. Remember your who today because when I stop and I just remember my who, it happened in worship right here. I was pacing the back of the room and I just had a moment where I just, I remembered for a moment. Maybe I just forgot for 30 minutes or whatever. God, I, man, you're good. And something changes when we begin to do that. We get in this place of, God, I gotta pay this bill. I, how am I gonna handle this doctor's report? I just found out I have COVID. What am I, no, I don't have COVID. But I'm just, maybe, maybe that's your example. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. What am I gonna do about it? My children need to be saved. And now in this season, they're running crazy because nobody knows what to do. It's not about, God, what are you gonna do for me? How am I gonna fit into the plan that God has? Now look, God called us to plant a church. We knew it for years. When we made the decision to step out, in 2019, in the middle of the summer, oh, it's gonna be amazing. 2020, we're planting a church. We're stepping out to plant a church. This is God's plan. Why, why? I don't know. I'm not gonna question. Now, I find myself going to that, and I just gotta remember my who in this moment. So I'm gonna give you some questions to ask. You could ask this. How can I grow in this season to please you, God? What if we ask ourselves that question? God, how can I grow in this season to please you? Or how about this one? How can I get a little closer to you in this season, God, when everybody else is further away from me? How can I get a little closer to you, God? How can I understand the magnitude of who you are more, God, when I can't see you as much as I could before? Like These are great questions that if we stop and we just ask God, listen, if you ask God, he will talk to you back, I promise you. He'll give you the peace that passes all understanding, meaning in the middle of this craziness, when there should be no peace, we have peace because we know who our who is. We remember who our source is. So I just want to remind you today of what God tells Moses. Moses says, I don't have what I need. I don't know how to do this. And God, what are you going to do? And then God says this, Moses, I am that I am. When they ask who I am, say, I am that I am. So today, you need to be reminded that he is. God is telling you right now, out of my mouth, he's saying, I am. You need a good doctor's report? Man, he is that. You need some more money to pay that bill? He is that. God is your source today. God is your source today. What are you praying for? Cool. God's saying, I am that. I know what you see, but remember, I am that. I am your source. So just stop and try to grasp the magnificence of God's presence today. Remember who your source is. Psalms 23, one says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Man, lack is all around me. That's part of our vision. We wanna help people dream big, search deep, find more and live rich. And that means that I lack nothing. I know that finances are crazy and health is crazy and the world is crazy, but I don't lack anything because the Lord is my shepherd. He's my source. And when the Lord's your shepherd, you're gonna be okay. I promise you, you're gonna get through it. Isaiah 58, 11, it says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in dry places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. The Lord will guide you. Oh, none of that happens unless the Lord is guiding you. Today, I just wanna remind you, remember your who. Let the Lord guide you. Matthew 6, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things after that will be added to you. I remember 2013, I gave my life to Jesus. If you've never heard our story, you can go back and watch some of the earlier messages, me and Megan. We, we, we're just trying to figure it out. We're in ministry school. We're just serving. We're doing the thing. We, we're broke as a joke. Money problems, it's crazy. Trying to figure it out with two little kids. I've never been here before. This is wild. And we just keep trusting God. And there's days where it's like two days to payday, man. We're eating ice sandwiches. Put a little hot sauce on it. It'll be better. That's what we're doing. We're just trying to figure it out. But we had to stay tapped in to our who. And I remember many moments, I could give you so many miracle stories, where we're out of money. We have no idea how we're going to pay bills. And we just need $7. I'm trying to hit the Dollar Tree. Come on, Dollar Tree ever been good to anybody? I'm telling you, Dollar Tree's been good to your boy. <laughs> got some good stuff from the Dollar Tree. But I couldn't figure out how to do it. And randomly, somebody would call Megan and they'd say, hey, I got a $50 gift card I just got today. I felt like I was supposed to bring that by to you. Like, wow, Lord. Wow, and one of the things we stayed committed to because we remembered that God was our source, we have been consistent tithers since 2014. So 10% of everything. So I'd get a $50 Visa card and I'd say, God, thank you. For, here's $5. It's all yours anyway. And i just tie $5 off of it, 10%. And I would just give back to God because God brought us those gift cards. And then one random time, I remember, because I, I ran out of gas on the interstate multiple times, and Megan used to love having people pick me up on the side of the interstate. She'd be like, why didn't you get gas? I'd be like, because this $2 and change, I was trying to make it stretch that I had in my pocket. Like, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> and I remember this one day, we have one car at the time, two little boys, two little babies. She's doing worship practice. She's at the church. I'd get off, I'd get off work. I'd go meet her there. I'd pick up the kids. I'd go to the house. And then I'd have to go back and pick her up later because we only had one car. We were trying to figure all this out. And I remember this one day, I picked her up. This is Thursday. Payday's the next day. But I know even on payday, 
Like how many of y'all, you ain't even two payday and you still ain't got enough money even when you get paid to pay your bill. Like I, it was one of those moments. And I remember doing the math and just pulling up in my driveway and I'm just like, I'm gonna enjoy my kids. In this season, enjoy what God has given you. Quit worrying about what you don't have. Enjoy what God's given you because it'll change your perspective. And I just remember looking at my two boys and be like, man, we're gonna go in here and have a good time. We're gonna eat these ice sandwiches. It's gonna be a good time. We're gonna have a great day. And I go to the mailbox and I pull out the mail. How many of y'all, every time you go to the mailbox, you are like praying there's a check in the mail. There ain't gonna be no check in the mail, but every time, who would send me a check? Well, this one day, there was something there that I'd never seen before. And there's an envelope on top of the mail, scribble, scrabble all over it. All right, if this happens to you, just be careful because you don't know who put that piece of mail in your mailbox. I'm just gonna tell you that. So I pull it out and I'm like, this is weird. And so intentionally, I'm like, I'm gonna open this last. I'm gonna open it when I can be careful when I open it. So I get in the house and I open it and all of a sudden I pull out like a trifold uh, like piece of paper and $100 bills start falling out of this thing. And like, I'm like, what? I'm st- kids are just doing their thing and I'm like, and I read this note and somebody puts a note in there and they said, Kevin and Megan, Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for leading small groups. My life has been changed because of you. And I just wanted to bless you with this because God put you on our heart. And so this is for you today. And then it was like, P.S., don't try to figure out who this is because you're never gonna find out. To this day, we still have no idea who gave us this $1,000 in our mailbox randomly. If you talk about who is our source, God was my source that day. I didn't make any of that happen. God did every bit of that. I have no idea how that person knew other than to point back and say, God orchestrated every bit of that. God is my source in the midst of the worst moments because God does his best work in your worst days. As long as you remember that he is your source. I love this story so much, Luke chapter 10. We see the story of Mary and Martha. Now, Mary and Martha are sisters and they're serving and they love Jesus and they like Jesus rolling up in the house. And you see Mary and Martha, two sisters, they take a different approach when they meet Jesus in the house. Mary goes and sits at Jesus' feet. Martha is in the kitchen cooking. Now, Martha is trying to serve. She's trying to get the guests taken care of, get the house prepared and entertain. And Mary's just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Martha comes and says this. She's like, "Uh, Lord, my sister, she seated herself at the Lord's feet and continually listening to your teaching. I need some help in the kitchen. And then this is what Jesus tells her. It says, but the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. So today I wanna remind you to sit at the feet of your source. There's a lot of distractions around you. There's a lot that you could be thinking about and could be trying and could be doing and could be figuring out. (laughs) Facebook marketplace, yard sale, you'd be trying anything, selling whatever you got. I'm just trying to figure this thing out today. But I wanna remind you that you need to sit at the feet of your source. Because when you sit at the feet of where the power is, the power then has an opportunity to enter your life. I don't have any type of power, but the source does. You need to be reminded of who your source is today. Strength doesn't give you victory. Dependence on God does. We gotta lean into the dependency of our source today. So lean into that with me. Remember you're who. Only one thing is necessary. I found myself this morning, I woke up early just because when I went to bed last night, you know, I'm reading all these stories. There is nothing but negativity in front of us. On social media, in the news, everything that I'm watching, it's crazy. I, I don't know what to do. And I walked outside last night and I got the dog and I'm just sitting there thinking, God, what is going on? I thought this was gonna get better now. And now I'm in front of my Jericho. How am I gonna do this? And God just kind of very subtly just spent some time with me. Just spend some, but God, I gotta hurry. Now, I know, I know, but you can't hurry and do what I called you to do until you spend some time with me. Spend some time with me. Remember your who today. Now, listen, number two is this. You gotta focus on what to do. You gotta focus on what to do. This is all about your instructions. Aren't you thankful for instructions? Anybody thankful for instructions? Okay, now, I, we got a few guys in the room. How many of y'all, you don't use the instructions when you get a piece of furniture or you build something? Like, I'm like, I don't need the instructions. I've seen this. I can look at it and be like, I know where that goes right there. I got this. Now, I have put some wrong doors in some wrong places on some wrong furniture before. <laughs> I've done this many times. Put the wrong things in the wrong places. These are amazing. I love these so much. These are actual instruction labels on actual consumer goods. This is brilliant. We need instructions. Let's, let, let's listen to these. Okay, on a Sears hair dryer, do not use while sleeping. <laughs> I think that's amazing. How in the world are you even gonna do that? Don't you, you better, you better wake up. Don't you, don't you do that while you're sleeping? All right, say this now. On a bar of dial soap directions, use like regular soap. 
I don't even know what that means. Is there a difference than regular soap? What is that? Use like regular soap. This one's great. On a hotel provided shower cap in a box. Fits one head. Which one of y'all made them write that instruction? Because that is like crazy. Hey, baby, look at the shower cap. Come try this with me. What is that? <laughs> I think that's incredible. Packaging on a Rowenta iron. Do not iron clothes on body. Now, I don't know which one of y'all tried that. That is a terrible idea. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do that. You don't even need that shirt. We'll find a different shirt. You don't need to try that. All right. Uh, On Boots Children's Cough Medicine, do not drive car or operate machinery. On Children's Cough Medicine. (laughs) Wow. I mean, they write these things because somebody tried something the wrong way, apparently. On a string of Christmas lights for indoor or outdoor use only. Nothing in between that, indoor or outdoor. On a chainsaw, don't attempt to stop chain with your hands. I that. <laughs> oh, this one's so great. On a mattress, do not attempt to swallow. What in the world? <laughs> you can say, what? Don't attempt to swallow that mattress. They're talking to bears or something. I don't know what's going on. Sharks. <laughs> but we, we all try to do things the wrong way. God gives him very specific, descriptive instructions here in verse 2. He says, look sharp now, I've already given Jericho to you. He says, here's what you are to do. Now, let me tell you this. Too many of us expect God to go further than we're willing to go. And so we want God to give us what we see or don't see or think we're supposed to have, but then we don't wanna wait for the instructions. You gotta listen to the instructions, very specific. March around the city, all your soldiers, circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. March around the city, all your soldiers, circle the city once, repeat this for six days. March, circle, repeat. March, circle, repeat. Very just like laborious and boring and what this is. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions today. They're very specific. Matter of fact, he goes on in verse 10 to say this. Don't even shout and in fact, don't speak a word, not as much as a whisper until you hear me say shout. Now there is millions of Israelites. Could you imagine being the guy who's like, none of y'all say a word? To two million people, somebody's gonna say a word. I, I would imagine, I, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be like, hey, listen to watch what I do. <laughs> He's saying very specific instructions. This would be like me grabbing a team of us and we're gonna play a basketball game. One second left on the clock. We're down by a point. We're down by a point. We're gonna lose this game if we don't make the shot. And I gather everybody, I'm like, guys, here's what we're gonna do. All right, we're gonna give Colton the ball. Give Colton the ball. And Colton, when you grab it, just throw it up in the air and put your hands up. We won. <laughs> You're gonna be like, uh, coach, what are you smoking, coach? What did you take, coach? Like, that don't even make sense. I know, just do it. We're going to win the game. But this doesn't make any sense. But this is what he tells them to do. God is all about instructions. Proverbs 4.13 says, hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. The instructions are your life. They're going to they're help you. Proverbs 10, 17, whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life. But he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, do not lean on your own understanding. His ways are higher than your ways and his thoughts are higher than our, than our thoughts. Now listen, few facts to know about Jericho. I know we don't know all the facts about COVID and we've been trying to figure this out and we're learning as we go, but I'm just gonna tell you this. I am not gonna let Dr. Fauci tell me how to live my life. Come on, somebody listen. Who is your source today? I know we don't know all the details, but I'm telling you, we can adhere to all the guidelines given and still seek God and still go change the world. We can do that. The facts about Jericho are this. The population was actually somewhere between one to 2,000 people, all right? You have two million Israelites and you have a city of one to 2,000 people. So they outnumbered them 2,000 to one. 2,000 to one, just picture this, okay? They're all worried and freaking out. How are we gonna do this? And they outnumber them 2,000 to one. The walls of Jericho were actually very, very high. So the city itself was only about six to eight acres in, uh, acres in width. It's actually not big at all, but it was so big, it looked like a mammoth. Like, how are we gonna do this? And back then, what they would do is they'd actually build these siege ramps up over the walls, and then they would walk over, and they would just go take this little city. But the problem was that would take them six months. Whereas God's instructions took seven days. The instructions made no sense because we could just build this ramp up. God, I know how to do this. And God's like, cool, you can have it in six months or you can have it in a week. Which one you want? Which instructions are you gonna listen to? You can do it your way, but that's why it took them 40 years to get to the promised land when the trip should have taken 11 days. Because they didn't wanna listen to God's instructions. Follow the instructions. So today, let me just stop for just a moment, time out. What has God told you to do? 
There's something God has told you in this season. I find myself asking these questions a lot. God, what have you told me that I keep praying about? What have you told me that I keep asking for? Con Quit consulting people when God told you something. God created the people. God told you something. We gotta stop consulting and asking opinions. I don't need nobody else's opinion on what God told me. If so, I've had plenty of people that are probably like, are you sure that you should be planting a church right now? I'm not sure, but I know what God said. I know who my source is and I'm gonna follow my instructions. God's plan cannot be accomplished if you don't work it. So today, what has God told you? Let's move. Let's follow the instructions. Number three, point three, just follow through. <laughs> just follow through. This is all about your faith. The word follow through means this, to press on in an activity or process, especially to a conclusion. God's instruction for whatever you've been praying about, that it will take you to a conclusion point. But you have to follow through. God says, all right, I hear you. He's gonna give you something. He speaks to us. He's usually through his word. You need to pick up a Bible. If you're not picking up the Bible today, man, that's not a good thing. I need this more than ever. I'm, my prayer every day as a church planner is, God, I need supernatural wisdom because I don't know how to navigate this. Every pastor I talked to before us, I'm like, what, would, what did you do when this happened? They're like, I don't know, that never happened. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> what would you do if you were me and you had to do it? They're like, I don't know. You, you do it and tell us what, what happens. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> it's all about faith. Just follow through in basketball. Some of us play basketball in the room. In basketball, the most important part of your shot is the follow through. So if I just throw it up there, it may or might not go in. More than likely, it's not gonna go in. But the follow through, you gotta follow through the shot. So whenever I would miss shots when I was growing up playing basketball, they would always come say, your form is wrong and you're not following through. You're stopping here or what? You've got to follow through if you want to make the shot today. When faith is what's in you, faith is what comes out of you. Just follow through with what you know today. Because I'm telling, and I'm preaching to myself here. There are things, we are two months out from launch day. My gosh, we're two months out from launch day. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. I got to follow through. And there are moments where I'm like, I don't know that I want to do that. God, let's let COVID pass. Let's figure it out. There's a lot of people who are pushing launch days back. People are wanting to open businesses and they're holding out because we don't know what to do. Just follow through. Remember your who. Follow the instructions. Remember what to do and then follow through. And then maybe you're sitting there saying this and you're like, I want to believe, but I don't see it. And what if it doesn't work? I don't see it. Well, remember, we don't walk by faith. We walk by sight is what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Meaning, I can't see. You ever tried to walk in the dark? You gotta hold your hand out. I don't know where I'm going, but the Bible says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I can't see down there. So I just gotta keep walking. We walk by faith and not by sight. God's gonna tell you something. He's gonna give you some instructions and then you gotta move. You don't know if the shot's gonna go in until you follow through. You gotta continue moving. Romans 10, 17, you need some more faith, okay? Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, I ain't got no faith. You need some faith. Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let me just pause here for one second. All of us in the room, every one of us, all of you watching, no matter when you watch, all of us, are you reading this every day? Are we reading this every day? Because if we're not reading this every day, we are leaving the instructions out of our lives. You ever heard this uh, Bible? It's an acronym for basic instructions before leaving earth. Y'all ever heard that? Basic, some of y'all are like, oh, that's good. I'm writing that down. Basic instructions before leaving earth Bible. I heard that. I grew up in church, y'all. <laughs> Seriously, you need the Bible in your life. You want more faith? Then you need to hear the word of God because I don't have the right words to tell you as a pastor. I don't. My pastor doesn't have the right words to tell me. The Bible has the right words to tell me. You don't need to take my word for anything. You need to take God's word for something. God's word is what will change everything today in your life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Y'all remember this song? If you grew up in church, you, you've heard this song. Uh, we didn't do this in our worship set intentionally, but it was like this. It was like, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came a tumbling down. Come on, y'all know about that? Listen, don't listen, don't go, not, do not go Google that song, it's terrible. Who wrote that song, man? That's a terrible song. That's why we don't do it in our worship sets. But actually, that is not the way that song uh, happened biblically. It didn't happen like that. We sing this song. It's a cute song, but biblically, this is what happened. Hebrews eleven thirty. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. After the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the walls fell after they followed the instructions. I just need to remind somebody today. 
do what God told you. God put a dream in your heart. He put a word in your heart. You just got to keep going. It is hard. Man, planting a church was supposed to be easier than this. Ha! It's hard. But we know where we're going. Where did God tell you you're supposed to be going? God has greater for you. He has more. It's our vision. We want to help you dream big. He's in Ephesians 3.20, God. He can do more than you ask or imagine. Dream big, and then we'll go search deep. And when you search and you follow the instructions, you will find more. It's all through Scripture. But you got to operate in faith, and you can live a rich life with Jesus. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. I don't care if close. We, we were joking. We were like, COVID's closing in on us. It's coming from every angle. And it feels that way. It will not deter my faith. It's like Paul said. They're like, they're like uh, if you don't stop talking about Jesus, we're going to kill you. He's like, cool, I'll be with Jesus. They're like, fine, we're just going to beat you. He's like, cool, because to live is Christ, to die is gain. I'm good either way. I'm not going to let anything determine the way that I operate. And you can't either. Remember your who. Focus on what to do and then just follow through. And maybe you hear that story and you're like, that's the most ridiculous story. By what secondary means did the walls fall? How did this happen? And you need to quit trying to figure God out because you can't. You just gotta obey what he told you. You're gonna miss your miracle today if you're picky about the method. You just gotta pray, follow the instructions, and then just do what he told you to do, man. Just do what he told you to do. It's time to move. Your promised land is on the other side of prayer and faith and listening to instructions. God's like, I've already handled handled this for you. Now you gotta do this. Faith is what calls the walls to fall. Your promised land, it's out there. I, I can't see it right now. We got a room with just a few of us today. Normally we have a room full of people, 60, 70, 80 people who have called this place home over time. And I don't know what's ahead. I'd love to say that we're gonna see thousands upon thousands of lives changed. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that God can do more than we ask or imagine today. I believe that. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it, but I'm looking at my promised land. Don't forget your why. Somebody's life, somebody's eternity is contingent upon what you do. Don't sit back in the game. Read the book. Read the Bible. Pray. Pray every day. My life depends on God more than ever before. Why would I not be praying to the God of the universe? We need to be praying. We need to be reading our word. You need to stop and you need to take a moment to worship. Something about when these strings just begin to play and I just stop and I just reflect on my who. Oh, man, something shifts. When you're in the presence of God, everything you need is right there. Everything. It'll shift every environment, every atmosphere. You just need to follow through. Remember your who. Next week, it's gonna be our legacy offering. First time we ever do this. Every year, we're gonna do an annual offering where we give the whole thing and then we give the entire thing away. Every year, we're gonna do this in December. This year, we have the privilege to do this as a first time and being the ones on the team, we get to be the ones that sow into the launch of our church. So we're gonna take this first one intentionally above and beyond our tithes and normal offerings and we're gonna give to what God's doing because I know I can't see what's beyond. I don't know how I'm gonna get past Jericho, but I'm telling you, I'm gonna press forward and we're gonna do this together and I wanna ask you to participate now. We're gonna tell you a lot more about that here at the end of the service and next week, but think about that with us. Pray about that. And here's why. First Chronicles 28, 9 and 10. Solomon, who was the wisest man ever to live because he asked God for wisdom. This is what he says in verse 9 and 10. God says, and you, Solomon, my son, get to know well your father's God. Serve him with a whole heart and eager mind. For God examines every heart and sees through every motive. Okay, check this out. If you seek him, he'll make sure you find him. But if you abandon him, he'll leave you for good. Look sharp now. Look sharp now. Act quickly. Go in a hurry. Look sharp now. God has chosen you to build his holy house. Be brave, determined, and do it. Look sharp now. God's chosen you. God's chosen all of us in this room. It doesn't matter what part we play. Some of us are back here behind the camera. It doesn't matter. God chose me. He chose you. I don't know why. Why, God? Because he chose us, and I'm determined. I'm going to be brave and do it. I have to press forward because people are dying all around us, and they're going to go to one of two places. They're gonna go to heaven or hell and I want them to go to heaven with us, man. That's what I want people to do. I had people that for 10 years pressed forward and they prayed for me and they believed great things and they couldn't see them, but they kept following the plan. They kept just operating in faith and by faith, the walls fell. By faith, the walls fell. Through prayer and fasting and the word, the walls fell. You gotta keep praying and operating in faith today. The walls of whatever's in front of you will fall. You need to remember your who, submit to the source. Maybe you wandered away from your source in this season. They said that a third of Americans have stopped going to church in this season. 
We've, in the midst of the craziest season of our lives, we're wandering away from our source. We can't do that. Come back. Share this with somebody who you know stopped going to church. Share it right now. We need to remember our who. Then you gotta focus on what to do. Follow the instructions. And then just follow through. Exercise your faith. March, circle, repeat. March, circle, repeat. March, circle, repeat. I know it sounds crazy, but march, circle, repeat. The other side is a miracle. March, circle, repeat. Keep praying. You keep fasting. Get in that book. If you need help, email me, Kevin at trophites.com. I will buy you a Bible. We will give you a Bible. We will, we'll call you. We'll pray for you. We'll, we'll DM you. We'll do, we'll do whatever we got to do to make sure that you get to where God wants to take you. Some of us just need a faith lift. And we want to be that for you. And so God, right here and right now, I pray for everybody who's watching Jesus. I don't care when they're watching. <laughs> Your word says that the prayer of a righteous man of Elif much. And here and now, God, we pray and lift up every, everybody watching. We ask you to strengthen them, God. Remind them that you're there who? Remind them that you have nothing but blessings and benefits, God. Strengthen them. Give them the instructions, God. Give it, if, they're, if, they're, if they're asking now, give them to them. Give them the instructions. And then God, just help them with their faith. Strengthen our faith, I pray, God. We got a world to change. We will change the world for the glory of God. That is what we're here for. So today we recommit to that. And maybe you're watching here today and you're like, man, I've never looked at God as my who or my source. I don't know the story about Joshua. I don't know any of this stuff. But man, I need some hope. I need some encouragement. Romans 5, 8 says that Jesus died for you while you were a sinner. While we did not care, while we didn't have anything to do with him and didn't want it, he, he said, here it is. And we said, no, he still died for you. So today you have an opportunity to make him your source, make him your who, and watch everything change. And I'm asking you to do that. And so right here and right now, you can pray a prayer with me like this. If you know that's you, don't move forward without praying this prayer today. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you're my savior. You are my Lord. I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. Thank you for being my source. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Come on, can we give God some praise for whoever just said yes to Jesus? I love it, man, so much. Listen, if you just said yes to Jesus, then we want you to do a couple things. Text the word Trove Heights, Trove to 94090. Trove to 94090. We're gonna give you a connect card. If you're not comfortable with doing that, you can email me directly, kevin at troveheights.com. And we wanna help you in this journey with Jesus because if you said yes to Jesus today, the journey only gets the greatest day of your life. And guess what? It only gets better. We wanna help you with what comes next. We will give you a Bible. We will pray with you. We will do whatever we gotta do to make sure that you're walking down this path and just operating because God has a promised land for you down the road. So text TROVE to 94090. Now you heard me talk about our legacy offering a few minutes ago. If you'd like to be a part of that, that will be next week. We're gonna do this one-time offering that we're just asking people to jump in with us. It takes a lot. You're watching the pieces come together with the band and everything else. You help pay for that some of you guys thank you for doing that we are so grateful for you guys that have sewed into this and you can keep being a part of that by sewing into that legacy offering with us if you'd like to go ahead and give and be a part of that your generosity makes an incredible impact as we're trying to launch the church we're trying to find a venue y'all pray for us we're trying to find a venue for church two months out but you can text the word trove heights to 77977 or you can go to troveheights.com slash give and you can find out more information about all that. We need you. We need your prayer. We need your support. We need you to help us with some money. If you're watching and you're like, you've been watching for a while and you're in Nashville, we need you on the team, don't we? We need them on the team. We need them on the team. Come jump in with us. Kevin at TroveHeights.com. Email me. We would love to pray with you and help you with anything that we have. Have a Merry Christmas coming up. Get ready to join us for a Christmas service special here in a couple weeks. It's a lot of exciting things ahead. We'll tell you a lot more about it if you go to TroveHeights.com. Follow us on Instagram at Trove Heights. You'll find out all that. And this is my prayer for you today. I pray that the Lord blesses you. I pray that he keeps you. I pray that he makes his face to shine upon you, that he's gracious unto you, that he turns his countenance toward you, and that today he gives you the peace that only he can give you in Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. Come on, give God praise. We love you guys. Trove Heights Online. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.